Okay, we are going to draw our attention to an American sprinter who goes by the name of Maurice Green. An American sprinter who was born in 1974, who is now age 46. He was a former world record holder in both the 60 metres, which he set in 1999, setting a time, an astonishing time of 6.39 seconds. He also ran the 100 metres in 9.79 seconds, which he set in 1999, which also was a world record. So at his prime, Maurice Green was the only athlete to hold a world record in both the 100 metres and the 60 metres. He also has a time of 19.86 seconds for the 200 metres. So today we're going to review some technical points that I found were what set him apart from everybody else at the time. I was fortunate enough to race Maurice Green uh, over the years. We both had a fierce rivalry um, and it stemmed over for a long period of time. I beat him, he beat me and that's what made the sport exciting. So without further ado, we're going to look at his world record time of 6.39, which he set, as I said, in 1998. So I'll review this now and then we'll have a chat about it. All right, so I always like to review in real time and we'll talk slow-mo. So, I'm going to rewind back, give you guys an insight into the things that set him apart from everybody else. All right, and the things that he knows he has to focus on in order to achieve a goal that's going to get him to break world records. Right, so you'll see as he comes out of the blocks, they all look the same. You're not going to notice much difference. All right. So where it starts to get real technical and real interesting for us technical geeks is you notice his first seven steps are crucial. If you notice, this line right here is 10 meters from the start line. All right. And he is the only person that lands on it. Everyone else is a foot or so behind. I'm not sure who this guy is, but he's not too far behind. But Maurice is on the line. Not sure who this guy is, probably about three or four feet behind, two or three. And again, we've got an individual here. So where we're looking at this from a technical point of view, you want to make sure your first seven steps have good flexion and extension. All right, so again, you can see where he's executing from the blocks. I know this pole vault bar is in the way, but you can see how well he delivers that. And he continues to do that with his left leg and his right leg. And he'll continue to do that for the first seven steps. This gives him good extension and maximizes his legs and full extent of it over the first 10 meters, which then enables him to carry on, carry that over into the latter part of the race. So again, he's still got good extension at the back. Nothing's changed here. I think what stops all these other guys is they just didn't... They've never had this part of their physical makeup trained enough. This was something that, if you know anything about John Smith, his coach at the time, they would have focused on this to the highest degree. So as he's approaching his seventh step, you can see he's still in extension. You can still, still see that. Some are trying to do it, but not as well. You can see this broken pattern here. Um, so there's a lot going on with people's the way they're delivering and moving and yes everyone's at a different stage in the race at this present time again you can see this guy's head's already up he's ready to get running down the track already good extension but he's not allowing himself to still continue to build speed like Maurice does so you can see his head's leaning in a direction that's going to force him to continue going forward same again with this guy so again you can see seventh step he's on the line everyone's already two three feet behind him and he continues to do that. And as his torso begins to rise, it's very, very gradual. But as his torso continues to rise, you notice the steps behind him become shorter. They're not so far behind anymore. So with that, this is where he starts to get into max velocity and what we call maintenance of speed or however you want to word it. But I just try and keep it simple for us the viewers and the supporters and the lovers of sport to understand so again you can see this back foot is now you would have heard me refer to this in the Shawnee Miller and Usain Bolt 
video, the lowercase i. The whole length of the body is the lower part of the eye, and the head is the dot. And if you notice, his head hasn't changed, nothing else has changed. You know, nothing else has changed. The only thing is now he's spending less time behind and pushing down and then immediately lifting that left heel back up. So at no point does it kick behind. Just using this as an example. So it goes behind and it immediately pulls it back up. So it just helps maintain his maintenance of speed. So less behind. So it's more of a pushing down action and pulling. He pushes down with the left and pulls. He pushes down with the left. You can see it here continuously. You can see, push it down. It's just still trying, he's doing a very good job of maintaining that posture. Others are doing it, but they're just not with it today. Some are leaning too far forward. I think this might even be Tim Montgomery. You can see the difference. I believe that is John Drummond. So Maurice having John Drummond as a training partner, he knows John and John knows Maurice. So John already knows what Maurice's strengths are and weaknesses are and vice versa. But Maurice relies heavily on his strengths and shows very little weakness, even in training or even as a close friend. So he will always have John's number. John's number, descent, he will always know what ticks John off. But Maurice will show very, very little within training. Just so John can't use it against him. All right, these are the little tricks that happen within a training group. There can only be one king in a training group. There's no way both of these guys could be running equally as far. One of you's got to go. So if that's not gonna the case, whether it's financial or sponsorship, you being the alpha male or however you want to position yourself or word yourself, you will show very, very little emotion in training so that your training partners can't use that against you. But they won't get that. All right, so he maintains that form. And you can see it just has a magnificent result. And you can see here, he crosses the line and does a remarkable job. All right, 2000 Sydney Olympics, Australia, baby. So this was an amazing championship. So I was in the final of this championship. And what Maurice done a great job of was being able to maintain what he had over the 60 and carry it through. Now, the time over the 60 in Sydney Olympics will probably differ because obviously you can put all maximal amount of effort over a short distance. But when you know you're carrying your distance or your speed over a longer period of time, you slightly, you, you adopt the run in a different way, knowing that you've got to conserve energy. So I like this race a lot because this guy was the first person I noticed that used the drive phrase. And again, little things that I look for, how well he keeps his knee midline to the stomach or the belly button. All right, so you may have seen that first little clip. Uh, a lot of coaches question what people do with their feet and them going left and right. No, so we're looking here now. So you get out the way. Looking here. You'll see a lot of that movement. Uh, there's not much you can do about that if you want to be super, super particular about it. But it doesn't. it's just a way athletes display their strength and their execution from the block. There's a lot of shearing and twisting and turning, but that's, I think that's all part and parcel with it. As long as what's happening... Again, down here, you can see the heel stays high. But as long as what's happening, the knee keeps on going forward and lands midline or is driven midline to the belly button, as long as that continues to happen then I think you'll always have uh, put yourself in a good position. Again, you'll see all this happening. And it's never ever going to be perfect. It just may have not got out the blocks or just how Maurice chooses to display his movement um, going forward. All right, but you'll always see, he always finishes midline. That knee is always midline to the stomach. Good extension at the back. Arms are swinging widely at the front. Sorry, widely at the back. And arms always, again, midline. So even though it's cross, left, right knee, left arm, again, it's all midline to the belly button. All right, and he continues to do that. Good, you can see, even on his transition up. And this is something I learned from Maurice Green. Again, 
Yes, he's transitioning. He's coming up. Um, let me go back a little, just so you can see what I'm getting at. So you're gonna see something quite quite pivotal here. I'm gonna count how many arm swings. I'm gonna probably count for these. Um, which arm? I'm gonna count. One, two, three. Count off the left. Four. This right arm. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 arm swings. So what's that? 28 strides he took before he came up. 28. So I would imagine that's probably nearing 30, 35, 40 meters. He extended his drive phase for. People don't really realize that because then if you can delay how long you have to hold your speed for, you decelerate for longer. You decelerate, you decelerate for less. The longer you can delay your maximal velocity, you spend less time decelerating. So if you were to get out the blocks and get up at 10 meters, you've got to hold your speed <laughs> for near on 90. But he's now given himself, if he drove to 35, 40, he's given himself 20 meters of max velocity. And then he's got another 30 or 40 meters to, de to decelerate. So by conserving himself and making, working that efficient way, it prolonged his career, enabled him to compete at a high level and pretty much beat everyone else that was out there because nobody else was able to do what he was um, able to do. So, yeah, I would normally say Maurice is a lot more relaxed than this, but the pressure of being an Olympic champion far outweighed how much he concentrated on his technique, but he did still do that to an excellent standard. All right, so if we look at this from a side view... I like this one because all the flashing lights. See, excellent arm swing. Everyone's pretty much similar. His training partner, Atto, John Drummond, Maurice, and he's not ahead. If anything, I'm ahead here. That's 14, and then I disappear. We've got Kim Collins there, and he's still driving. So let me remove you now. So everyone else is still up. Everyone's upright. Kim's upright. Atto's upright. John Drummond's upright. I was probably upright from way back here. Maurice is still working on that transition and driving himself forward. And now he slowly comes up. Arm swings are still accelerated. Good arm swing at the front and at the back. And again, you can see how well crushed fingers are figure four. You would heard me talk about that before. And I guess very, very little push at the back. Still holding up lowercase i position. And maintains that all the way through. And he was able to come Olympic champion. Here's another view of him. There's me in lane three against my good friend uh, Obadeli Thompson. And then Maurice Green and then John Drummond. Still driving, still working on and slowly, gradually bringing himself up. And then going forward. I was too focused on winning, but it's not about me today. So obviously Maurice went forward to then become Olympic champion okay Edmonton Canada 2001 world championships so off the back of his Olympic success he then came back and um, took on world champion for the second time um, I like this view uh, working on what he does again you can see the moving of the feet but again it's not too much of a major concern picky coaches will look at things like this the fact that it's twisted outwards so massively, but again, these are part and parcel with what happens in sport and when you're delivering your speed in that way. Maurice was carrying an injury this year, so he had a heavily he was strapped on the left knee. But again, he repeats the same running motion. Twenty four arm swings. And what I like about this, you will notice his eyes are the last thing to come up. So you can see roughly his body's upright, because you can see he's clearly his numbers clearly, his chest. And you'll notice his eyes are the last thing to come up. So whenever you're driving, or not driving the car, but driving your driving phase, you want your eyes to be the last thing that come up and lock onto the track or your final destination, whether it's whatever you choose to focus on down the line. It's your eyes are the last thing. 